Good morning. Welcome to week two. So last week was a little sketchy only because we had a holiday. We were adding some new folks, which is always exciting to add new folks, but you don't want to get too carried away, right? You want everybody to kind of be working through the group as a team, as a family, as a cohort. So we are excited that you're here. And this group is different. I keep saying that this group is different. Well, how is it different? Last week didn't feel super different. Welcome. This is the week where we put the pedal to the metal. That's what I said this morning. And what I'm going to do today is just go over quickly some group requirements, right? We want success. If you think back to school, whether it's college or maybe you got your master's or just elementary school, before you had a test, you knew what was required of you. The only way to pass the test was to fulfill those requirements. This group is going to be the same way. So I don't want there to be any confusion as to what's expected of you. Now, you may be wondering, how is this different? Because maybe you tried to be mindset before and maybe you got some results initially early on and then you just kind of haven't kept with it. Well, that's what this is all about. It's recalibrating. It's going back to the core, the heart of what to be mindset is all about. So without further ado, Each week, we're going to have a specific focus. If you have watched the first video, you know Alana talks about the two bunnies, which really each ear of the bunny is an important concept. So the four weeks of this group, we're going to cover one of each of the bunnies. Last week was water first. This week, we're going to tackle veggies most, which is so exciting because we're coming up on Thanksgiving. And if you have family or friends in town, you're going to probably want to do some of those things with veggies that we're going to talk about in here. So super fun. Um, Then we're going to be using the scale and tracking all the things. And those four concepts, when you incorporate those in tandem with some good mindset work, right? And some other things we'll talk about that are specific to this group, specific to you and ways that we will aid your success, you're going to nail it. There's no way, this is like double negatives, there's no way not to lose weight during the holidays if we stick together, if we follow the program together. And it's not a diet. This is a lifestyle. So this is where it gets super fun, but you got to be committed. If you are here saying, "Eh, I don't know, I would love it if you would go ahead and remove your name. Go ahead and take your name out because my expectation of you is that you're going to dig in. You're going to be committed and that commitment to yourself is going to build this chain of commitment. You're going to trust yourself more. You're going to make better decisions, but you're also going to encourage other people in the group. What happens when that happens? I love the expression, high tides rise all boats and this is the time we're going to rise all of our boats together. So that's what this group is about. I expect you will check into the group. I don't expect you to be on. I don't see anybody on live with me right now. That's okay because it's recorded. It'll play back whenever you're ready. But I expect you to do the work in the group, right? Doing the work brings the results. Otherwise, we'd all be our ideal weight, making our ideal income without ever doing anything. Wouldn't that be fun? I also have an expectation that you will drink your Shakeology once a day. Now, if you want to make it into a shake or you want to make it into protein balls or you want to make a mug cake or you want to make, um, oh God, there's so many recipes, overnight oats, that is up to you. Now we have one person in this group and she and I have talked, she's got celiac disease and she can't have anything that's even remotely produced with gluten at all. And Shakeology doesn't have gluten, but I can't promise that it won't affect her. So she's off the hook, but the rest of you are putting your best foot forward with this specific nutrition, it is critical. I'm telling you, I have been coaching clients for six years and the ones that get the best results are the ones that drink Shakeology, myself included. So be consistent, if only for the four weeks. I challenge you, because then that habit's gonna build, all right? And then the final piece of this group, and I think possibly where you might have gone wrong in the past, is the requirement is that you will complete every single one of the 2B Mindset videos before the end of the four weeks, okay? Don't worry. We're going to give you some guidelines, we being me. (laughs) I'm going to pick out what you should be finishing by the end of this week. Now, if you didn't start last week or if you just got added to the group, you're just joining us, welcome. Don't feel overwhelmed. Most of the videos are between two to five minutes. You can watch them in Listen to them in the car. I almost said watch them in the car. Listen to them when you're driving. Watch them when you're putting on makeup in the morning. Put your earbuds in when you're washing dishes after dinner. There are tons of ways. In fact, if you have a smart TV, 
send them up to your TV and watch them as a family if you have people around you. It's a great way to get everyone involved. This information is not a diet, so there's not going to be that language. Uh, so if your kids hear it, it's healthy eating. It's a lifestyle. And wouldn't that be a gift for them? Okay. So that's what this is all about. Now, why did we call the group Thrive Through the Holidays? And the reason we called it Thrive Through the Holidays is because oftentimes the holiday season can be super stressful. There's an expectation of parties and gifts, and sometimes you're around family that you don't care for, and stress levels can go up and bank accounts can go down, and it doesn't feel like thriving. But I'm going to offer you that it really could feel like thriving. And we're going to find those little bits of the day where we can take control of that and we can pursue what's best for us in those moments. We can control our stress. We can control our thoughts around that. We can certainly control what food we're consuming. Um, There's extra concepts that we'll go over in this group. Lots of really good stuff. And I'm going to try to pair them as best as I can with the week we're on. One of the things that that has worked so successfully, it's not a to-be mindset principle, but it is a principle for real health. It's to plan what you're going to do. So so I know we're tracking, but we're going to plan what we're going to eat. And then we're going to eat only and what we wrote down. We'll talk more about that later. But those types of behaviors, again, you're building that trust with yourself. And when you start to build trust with yourself, one of the reasons why people fail a diet is because, and this is, you you hear this all the time. You may have even said this, I fell off the wagon. Well, why did we fall off the wagon? We fell off the wagon because we broke that promise to ourselves. We said we were going to follow this plan. We said we weren't going to, we were going to be dinner and done. And then all of a sudden, we find ourselves snacking at nine o'clock at night. And when we do that, our brain says, meh, she wasn't serious, right? So we have that one little indiscretion. And then the next time it comes up where we could have veggies most, or we can have a Snickers bar, we say, nah, this one time, right? There's freedom in that. This is where I'm gonna challenge you to really get serious. And this is not deprivation, because I, I I almost, you're not even on here listening live, but I feel that I'm kind of sensing that, oh, it's going to be one of those things. No, it's not. You get to make really solid choices. You get to figure out what works well for your body, what works well for your chemistry, because it's not a bank account. It's not about a calorie counting thing. It's about fueling your body and finding out what might cause inflammation, what might not cause inflammation, what makes you feel great, what soothes your tummy, that kind of thing. Okay. But I'm going to end today by talking about one way that this program can lead you the wrong way if you're not being intentional. The thing I love the most about the 2B mindset is that it is a lifestyle. It is ultimate freedom. It's a lot like intuitive eating. She gives us guidelines. She gives us, we talk about plate it. We'll talk about plate it. Um, but that's not a, you must do it this way. If you do it this, if you do it anything other than this, you're wrong. That's not how it works. You really get to experiment to find out what works well. That's a protocol that has worked for thousands of people. So why not try it? But you have freedom in that, right? She even talks about that. That's why probably when you started this, one of the appeals is, oh, I can still have chocolate on this. Oh, I could still have a cocktail on this. Yes, that's living life. But anything to excess is a problem. Since we're here and we're talking about holidays, this is where that period from next week until the end of the year can get really tricky. Why? Because of sugar, because of all the treats, right? All these things are coming at you. That's what makes the holidays fun. I mean, that's what, I mean, there's things that come out around the holidays that you don't get to have access to any other time of the year. How fun is that? And I want you to be able to enjoy them, but I want to give you some things to think about today as we kind of move into this week, as we are setting our mind on the focus of where we want to go. 20 years ago, 20 years ago, 200 years ago, let's go a little farther back in time. 200 years ago, the average American consumed, how much sugar do you think the average American consumed in a year? What do you think? Comment in here. Type your answer in. The average American 200 years ago consumed two pounds of sugar for the entire year, for the entire year. And I 
am not a teacher, but I brought a visual aid. Yes, these are potatoes. And this, I'm not saying potatoes are sugar. I just wanted something that I had in my pantry that would weigh. This is two pounds of potatoes. So I have one, two, they're little potatoes too. Three, four, five, can I balance them? Six potatoes, okay? Six potatoes. This weighs two pounds Woo. on a scale. That's the amount, if you think of that in sugar, that's the amount of sugar that people ate 200 years ago. What do you think people eat now? I feel like I need the music. Do, 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 do. This is where this is going to shock you. And it's going to explain why people gain five to seven pounds on average in the last quarter of the year, year over year over year over year. This is why people get to age 50, 60, 70, and they've gained all this additional weight and they don't know where it's come from, okay? The average person, 200 years ago, two pounds of sugar. The average person right now eats 152 pounds of sugar every year. That's a lot of potatoes. That's, in fact, if this is six, that would be 556 potatoes worth of sugar every year every year that's a lot that explains why people gain weight that's that explains why you might have been following the to be mindset principles you might have been having treat not cheat but you might have been having carbohydrates that were higher in sugar as part of your daily plan and you were gaining weight instead of losing weight okay so excess sugar is associated with a lot of things other than just weight gain. It's associated with type 2 diabetes. We know that. That's more of a lifestyle disease. It's associated with heart disease, certain types of cancer, tooth decay, obviously, non-alcoholic fatty liver, and a host of other things. I don't say that to scare you, but this is never about getting in the pair of genes. This is about your health. This is your long-term health plan. All right? So I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to give you kind of 20, I think there's 20 on this list, sources that are healthy foods that you may be eating, but we're going to talk about some exchanges that contain a lot of sugar, a lot of hidden sugar. We know chocolate, candy, we just came off of Halloween. We know sweets, cakes, pies, ice cream are tons of sugar, right? But what are we eating? Bread has a lot of sugar, things that will convert to sugar. What are we eating that also has hidden sugars? Low-fat yogurt. I love yogurt. I love yogurt with some nuts and seeds and some mixed-in fruit. But I would say to you, I'd offer to you, let's make a change. Let's make a change over the next four weeks. If you're a yogurt fan, switch to Greek yogurt, unflavored. What? I know you can add some honey or something else, but we want to not have all those other processed sugars in there, okay? So low-fat yogurt, barbecue sauce. Ugh, I love barbecue sauce. I love using it in my crock pot. I found a almost sugar-free, it's a low-sugar barbecue sauce that's amazing. You can also make your own. Ketchup, read the label. Read the label. If you're not already reading labels by doing To Be Mindset, you're going to be a pro by the end of this. Read the label. Look at the sugar. Fruit juice, that's obvious. Spaghetti sauce. Pick a low sugar spaghetti sauce or better yet, make your own. It's super cheap to make your own. We can talk about recipes in this group. Sports drinks. Sports drinks a lot of times, and especially if you have kiddos, Gatorade, Powerade, those types of things, they're loaded with sugar. Also added colors and things like that. Chocolate milk, same thing. Lots of sugar. Granola. Read the label. There are some granolas. I have one that I will recommend to you all um, that's very high in FFC. If you don't know what FFC is, you will learn. Fiber-filled carbohydrate. You want to have higher fiber, lower sugar. Your fiber should outpace your sugar. But granola is a big one. And granola can be used in a lot of different ways, but we have to be cautious on what we're doing with it. All right. Flavored coffees. I'd throw in there flavored coffee creamers too. Maybe you drink black coffee, but you add a flavored coffee creamer, especially this time of the year. You get all the mochas and the peppermints and the um, toasted caramels and the uh, pumpkin spice. A lot of that has a lot of added sugar. And, And we can go over the names of sugars too another time, but be mindful of that. Iced tea, obvious. Protein bars have a lot of added sugar to them. Vitamin water, you think you're doing something great, it's got a lot of sugar in it. Just go with regular water, add fruit. We learned that last week. If you've watched the water videos, 
Fill your water with mint leaves or lemon or strawberries, watermelon juice, all these different ways to really flavor your water. Add those enhancements, some essential oils. You've got it good without the extra sugar. Pre-made soup. So soup in a box, soup in a can, read the label, okay? A lot of those have a lot of extra sugar and salt, but today we're talking about sugar. Cereal bars. Cereal bars, the uh, binder, the, the breading around it, tons of sugar. And then the paste in the middle is a high sugar, generally high fructose corn syrup product. I'd stay away from cereal bars. Canned fruit. You can just do whole fruit, do whole fruit, get that fiber, make the exchange. It really, if you're eating fruit on a regular basis, it's not going to go bad. We can talk more about that. Canned baked beans, if you're doing cookouts, be mindful of that. Bottled smoothies, bottled smoothies, not generally a great idea. Seems convenient, but Shakeology is just as convenient and a low sugar product. And then breakfast cereal, always read the label. Now there's times where you're gonna have treats, that kind of thing, read the label, okay? There you have it. Did that surprise you? Are any of those items, things that you, ugh, I didn't really think about that. Are those items that you might have consumed on your journey up until now that might be leading to unexplained weight gain for you, even though you're kind of following the 2B mindset principles? I'll tell you, I did a little research before I hopped on, and the general guideline is that men should have no more than 150 calories a day from sugar. No more than 150 calories. Women should have no more than that's so 150 calories is about 37 and a half grams, and that's like I don't know nine teaspoons of sugar. Women should have no more than 100 calories from sugar, 100 calories from sugar per day, and that's about 25 grams, and that's about six teaspoons of sugar. That's not a lot of sugar. One 12 ounce regular Coke. What do you think is in that? That's 140 calories from sugar. So we can do better. And that's what we're here for. We're here to thrive through the holidays. We're here to make some great exchanges. We're here to prove that you can lose weight, feel great, enjoy parties, enjoy family, enjoy all those things. Be committed to ourselves, make promises to ourselves, build that trust with ourselves, and be a community. So once you have watched this video, I want you to drop your favorite GIF below, because I'm a GIF person, I love seeing those. But were you surprised at any of this? It shouldn't be surprising. This is so commonplace. And this is why you raising your game give, gives such permission to other people to level up, to do better, to, be, uh, to show up in a different way. So you are a force to be reckoned with. We're glad you're here. Let's get started.